My grandfather used to say, it's just like a war if there's a water raising fast. Because there's, there's no way we can stop it. This is the world Raven made. At first, it was a world of order and perfection. But Raven is a trickster. He took his creation apart and made it over as the imperfect world we have today, a world where rivers flood and people die. Each spring, Koyukon people watch the rising river with anxiety, remembering the destructive floods of past years. Older villagers tell a story from the distant time when earth was covered by a flood. Only the animals were saved. Raven make big craft, and uh, Raven put all the animals on that raft by pairs, just by pairs, that's all. No calves or nothing. And that's the way it starts, that's the Qadans that we have. Gadont Sydney is both the distant time and the stories that have been passed down through generations of elders. These stories describe the beginnings of the world. Koyukon people know that they are like stories in the Bible, filled with wisdom and truth. God put all the animals on Noah's Ark by pairs, and that's just exactly what our story says, but only it's on the raft. The story of Raven's Raft was told long before anyone brought the Koyukon the story of Noah's Ark. Knowing this, Koyukon people say the one proves the truth of the other. It's like what you learn from Bible. Nobody saw Bible. Nobody on earth is living now that saw the first Bible. So it's the same thing. Our belief is the same way. The Koyukon people live in the northwest corner of North America. Their traditional homeland is just below the Arctic Circle in Alaska's interior, along the Middle Yukon River and its largest tributary, the Cayucuk. 2,000 Koyukon live here today in 11 widely scattered villages. They belong to a large family of Native American peoples called Athabascan. Their neighbors to the north, the Eskimo, have a completely different history, language, and culture. These are times of far-reaching change for the Koyukon. Contact with the outside world is clear in every part of their lives. Yet tradition still flows deep, like the river, with its great fields of ice grinding past the village each spring. The mixing of two cultures is striking in Koyukon religion. For while they still follow the beliefs of their ancestors, the Koyukon have also become Christians. The people have sought a balance between biblical faith and the older creed in which everything in nature has a spirit and must be treated with respect. When there's ice running, they used to just keep us quiet. They just tell us to shut up and, you know, you're too small to talk about big things like that. And so, so we learn to respect ice or water or anything. And you're not supposed to, you know, even throw sticks on it because there is a spirit. The Bible and the distant time. How have the Koyukon been able to bring these two seemingly different ways of believing together? Is it possible to become a Christian and still follow the older path of an American Indian religion? The struggle to find a balance between these two worlds is brought into sharp and sometimes tragic focus in the religious life of Koyukon people today. You know, I was off balance for quite a while. 
because ever since I remember I was living in Indian Way, uh, and you know, Indian way of praying, everything, the, the language. And then <clears throat> in 1950, we finally got priest. Before that, we learned little, I learned a little bit about church. Then I start getting mixed up, who is right? Am I supposed to go by Bible or the way uh, I learned, you know, by my grandfather and the other old people? And I was off balance for a long time. I don't know what's way to really believe. Wilson Sam, an Episcopal lay minister, brings his congregation together to bless the river and to ask the river's blessings. The reason why we're going to have this is we want to give thanks to God for letting us use the ice. We ask you now to bless the water that we are about to travel on for the summer. We ask you to watch over our peoples that travel on it, guide them, and give them grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And as our old folks has always taught us, he used to say, Oh, that's not that, that's not no He's got the whole world in his hand, he's got the whole wide world in his hand, he's got the whole world in his hand, he's got the whole world. He's got the wind and the rain in his hand. He's got the wind and the rain in his hand. He's got the wind and the rain in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got everybody here in his hand. He's got everybody here in his hand. He's got everybody here. In his hand, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's Pat Killer was our first priest in, in Huslia, and he started preaching. And then I started telling him stories, and he really got interested. And I said, I can read the Bible, but what little I heard sound pretty much like ours. And then one time I tell him, uh, you know, Pat, I'm, I'm really off balance right now. I'm learning more about church, but I'm carrying my grandfather's way or our old people. And he say, you have to carry both. You have to carry both. Both of them is right. Those people were given power from God to heal one another. Boy, I felt good. The comfort Catherine Adler receives from her faith also comes from knowing that the Gadon Sydney stories are true. Changes in these stories are strictly forbidden. Me and my sister Flora, we, we got so tired of listening to the same story and we tell each other and my sister say let's make up a story that we'll have and I said I tell her you know an Indian I said gee that's good idea so we'll hear a new story and my grandmother heard us Hatani don't you ever make a story and you say who told those stories you know that we're telling you we didn't make up those stories so we really believe it because that's all we know is the Indian way. So there too I found out we're not supposed to make stories. Stephen and Catherine Atla live in Huslia on the Cayucook River, 250 miles west of Fairbanks. It is late May. Ice still clogs some of the creeks and sloughs. 
The Atlas check a fishnet for whitefish and pike. Stories from distant time teach a way of proper conduct toward nature. These rules are called together putlani. There are hundreds of them, all based on a profound respect for the natural world. Animals, plants, everything in nature has a spirit, which might be easily offended, especially by someone who is careless, arrogant, or wasteful. For traditional Koyukon people, these rules are as wise and as binding as biblical commandments. We don't talk about animals like if it's nothing. That's really Hotlani. Even water, you know. Far away. There's so many Hotlani. Didi used to tell me mom's best word is Hotlani. <laughs> Because I say, Hatlani, don't do that. Hatlani, don't say that. Hatlani, don't step over that. And everything, well, that's what my grandmother taught me and my grandfather. Everything was Hatlani. Well, they never let us talk about sky or moon or sun or star. I never, I was 14 when my grandmother died. And they never let me talk about those things. They always tell me, don't talk about, you know, something big, or don't talk like that, your mouth is small. My sister Flora used to say, I just wish my mouth is big as their side. So we could talk. <laughs> we thought they mean really small mouth. And here, you know, we're not big enough to talk about big things. It is a watchful world. Success, even survival, depends on a person's ability to stay in a state of grace with nature. People do not live by cleverness or skill alone. Animals must give themselves to the hunters. The weather must be kind. The river and ice must favor them. The Koyukon say it all depends on luck. But luck is given only to those who show respect who follow the rules and humble themselves before the higher power of the natural world. For the Koyukon, there are sins against nature, just as there are sins against men. Morality extends to all the world. You're just getting yourself bad luck by not respecting the animal. Like that whitefish we caught last night. This morning we just cut the head off and, you know, do what we want with it. But last night, uh, I wouldn't cut the head off until it's overnight. It's dead. It's really dead. Not cutting him while cutting his throat while it's alive. That's our way of praying for our land, is respect. Many older Koyukon have found a comfortable balance between the old ways and the new. But if they have found the best of both worlds, it is not always so for their children and grandchildren, caught in a confusing web of choices and cultural conflicts. Sometimes the pressures are too much to bear. Mm -hmm. A little fly mm -hmm. from Mabel. Mm -hmm. 
The village is like a great extended family. When someone dies, everyone gathers to help. Irma Nolner is comforted by friends. She is not the only mother here whose child has taken his own life. How I used to think about my boy. I wish he go to sleep. No, don't drink. How many times I used to say, don't drink, you boys, please. No, the test me. That's how cool it is. Raven, he made a human, so they'll just live forever or years and years, hundreds of years. And then pretty soon he said the same thing. You know, why make it too easy for people? Is nothing will happen. So he make it so that he just die and then, you know, never come back alive. It's been many months since Irma Nolner's son died. People gathered then for a funeral and a burial in frozen ground. Now, on Memorial Day, Surrounded by the new life of spring, they replace the temporary cross with a permanent one and add a fence and grave cover. For a time, spirits of the dead remain near the living, reluctant to join the other world. Bits of the food they loved are burned in a fire to comfort them and to ease their loneliness. Irma Nolner offers tea and moose meat. The spirit of her son is nourished with the sacrament of smoke.
Family members clean and groom the graves of their loved ones and repair flags torn by winter gales. People cook meat and fish over open fires and burn food for the spirits of departed relatives. There's a lot of accident happen nowadays. And uh, for me, because we're, we're breaking too many of our beliefs, just like breaking laws. You think that we should keep up most of our belief about Hotlani, you know, not make fun of uh, people or animal. Maybe there's too many things that's not right going on and there's, there's an accident. Now that doctors start to help people from dying of natural death, there's accident. Because things are so mixed up and breaking too many of our beliefs. That's what I believe. Heaven is not remote, it is not far away, it is here, on the land and along the river, where the footprints of the living are impressed in ground where ancestors walked, and where the spirits of the dead drift forever on the wind. It didn't take us too long because we had a lot of help. Her son that we were doing this for was a good buddy of mine. He was a lot younger than me, but he was a really good friend of mine. And it was easy for me to talk with him. So I missed him too. And uh, so we really thank you that you all get with us and that you could really help us and that show our respect and care, we show her that we care about the son she lost. After a communion with the dead, there is communion among the living. People of Huslia gather at the home of Irma and Freddie Nolner to feast together once more on their best traditional foods, moose, wild birds, and fish. Sharing food from the land is among the most cherished of customs. It brings people together, expresses their connection with the land that directly sustains them, and reassures them that no one stands alone, even for a moment. I learned a little bit about Orvin people, and in there I never see any, anyone saying any respect of a tree or an animal, how to respect animal. And that's what I found different, is that I never see any place where white people respect anything the way we do. It's just like you would say a uh, Supreme Court. That's a you know, really big law you have to bring to Supreme Court. That's the way it is. You, it's with us, you know, and the, the respect, the belief we have. It's a big thing, but it's not recognized. People think, well, it's today, you know, it's nowadays. And, uh, you know, whatever belief we have, I guess they just think we can, we can get by without of it. But it shouldn't be, really. We should have tried to keep up uh, what we know. The blending of two religious traditions has not come without struggle. 
There is special promise, however, in what the Koyukon people have done. They have combined the wisdom in two great religious traditions, Christian and Native American. They have kept human beings and nature together in a single community, bound by principles of moral conduct. They have approached the earth as they would another human, with humility, restraint, and respect. When I, when I see things that's not right, it's hurting me inside. That's not the way my grandmother told me, you know, things like that. Because I have different belief. I mean, I have a belief that our people lived with. And uh, we really shouldn't do away with it. We should at least try to teach our kids what little we know. In spring, the sun no longer sets. It slides along the northern horizon through the long hours of quiet twilight. The days of summer, the days without night, will soon begin. Major funding for this series was provided by KUAC-TV, University of Alaska Fairbanks, Arco Alaska Incorporated, and Koitkladsina Limited. To learn more about Koyakon Athabascan culture, read Richard K. Nelson's book, Make Prayers to the Raven.